Welcome to the Old Souls and Seekers podcast brought to you by Satori Prime. If you're anything like us, you've been around and around the personal development and mindset block quite a few times. You've read the books, watched the videos, attended the seminars, and even worked with a coach or two, and yet you still find yourself searching for more. You may even feel stuck or that you should be farther along than where you are right now. And after doing over a decade of mindset work, we've come to this realization. Mindset work is like a small hit of dopamine that distracts you from your true work. You get these little hits of feeling better only to be met with the same underlying conditions and patterns over and over again. Now, mindset was an important part of your evolution as well as ours, but it hits a plateau and now you find yourself ready for that deeper layer of growth and expansion. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're ready to get off that Ferris wheel. This podcast is only for those that are ready to dive deep and do the real inner healing work. For those that are ready to move past more information into actual experiences. If you're looking for more understanding, then you've come to the wrong place. This is a home for old souls ready to fully embrace and remember who they truly are. Ready to make a profound difference in their lives and in the lives of others. So welcome home, dear one. We're excited to be part of your journey. Uh, What's up, everybody? Nice to have you. What's up, Ian and Robert, uh, Rebecca? Erska, Stacy, let's crack a lock in. So good to be with you all. Um, I thought that we would um, maybe start with just like a quick, quick drop in three minutes with sure. everybody. So <laughs> if you're if you're coming in, hey Nina, uh, if you're coming in, why don't you just get comfy? Let's kind of set the tone today by setting this the space today. So close your eyes. <clears throat> just get a few minutes of presence today. So even if, if the rest of your day is, has been tumultuous or you're currently tuning in from, from work or taking a break, just take a few minutes of presence for yourself today and give yourself that, uh, that honor and privilege. So close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and bring the awareness, bring your awareness away from the center of the head and orient it more to the space around your head first. And you may notice some thought forms floating around. You may notice some tension in the body, tension in the face. So intentionally softening the back of the eyes, softening the jaw, softening the forehead. And instead of trying to relax or make something of this moment, simply be observant of whatever is arising. So if there's tension or thought forms, you're welcome to include them. Don't do not try to control the mind. Do not try to control your thoughts. Just be observant of them and recognize them for what they are. Thought forms appearing and disappearing. And you are simply the witness that is watching. So noticing your feet or your butt 
and the contact with uh, the chair or whatever you're sitting in, noticing the contact with the feet on the ground. And see if you can just relax the body a little more and just offer the body into the support of the ground and the chair. Noticing that something is, is holding you up. And see what you notice about any shifts that may happen as you notice support from the ground or the chair. And then noticing the stomach and your center channel, noticing the heart and the throat, seeing if there's any sort of tension or contractions. And again, not trying to change anything, just being the pure witness, objective witness, just watching, softening the gaze of the witness. So beginning to just bring yourself back to presence here in the room. And as you kind of blink your eyes open, uh, practice here is in not collapsing back towards the mind, right? We tend to see the world kind of from here and behind the eyes, or at least that's how it appears uh, as a reminder. If you're new to our work or if you haven't done much of our work, you know, this is just where we've been conditioned to put our awareness, but awareness can be played with and you can find different dimensions of awareness. And one of the key factors for meditative practices, and if you haven't done our type of meditations before, um, it's really what differentiates them is that we, we don't do meditation to try to quiet the mind. We don't do meditation really for for any goal at all other than practicing being in the in the seat of the witness in the chair of the witness and allowing for life energy consciousness thought to roll and move through and the reason for that is because life is constantly emerging for all of us it's arising, it's falling, experiences come, experiences go, relationships come, relationships go. And a lot of us get really upset with what arises in our life because we view it from our conditioning and our conditioning has a very strong opinion about what you're supposed to and not supposed to experience in this world. And yet it keeps happening anyway, regardless of your opinion of what that is and how that is, right? So the real training, this is what we work on for years and work on this for lifetimes is really practicing and bringing yourself to this awareness, which is you are the witness that is viewing what is unfolding. And if you can let go or at least witness the opinions that come in the face of that, but not merge or identify with them, then it tends to be that the uh, pleasure of life comes not from the circumstances themselves, which is what most people are stuck in the matrix of that, but it's in purely the witness itself is the pleasure, right? So our, our baseline philosophy here is stop trying to make yourself feel better. How many of you guys just in the chat box are, are stuck in that race of just constantly trying to make yourself feel better? Just say yes in the chat box if, if you're part of that and you're not alone aren't we all i know everything i'm telling you and i still do that <laughs> <You know? laughs> still get trapped there right so there's no there's no shame in that game the the ego mind is a a a powerful 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 tool right yeah i was going to say a powerful opponent but it's really not an opponent it has it has its place it absolutely has its place i well i certainly think we can 
shift the relationship that we've had with the ego mind, it would be a scary human being to meet one without an ego. I don't think we'd survive at all in, in third density reality. It's an absolute necessary tool to live in this world. Yeah. So we're all doing that, right? And again, so it's most of you guys come to us because you want to resolve something. Is that true or not true? You want to get rid of something. You think there's something wrong with you or something broken or everyone else has figured something out and you haven't quite gotten it for some reason. So it dictates that perhaps, you know, you're not intelligent in some way or any of that stuff, which none of that is true, by the way. But I remember thinking all those things as well. And so what if the work is not about resolving anything? Because even when I say the word healing, and it's something we got to take responsibility for in the way that we dictate what healing is, healing is not resolution. Healing is in shifting the relationship with what's arising. When you're, when you have grace, space, and the ability to have unconditional love for what's arising within you, it is no longer an impedance at all. You wouldn't even think of trying to get rid of it because it nearly seems like it's a holy experience. Oh, there's my sadness. It's beautiful. There's my grief. It's gorgeous. There's my anger. Sensational. There's my love. There's my bliss. There's my generosity. Beautiful. Right? So is the problem that we're expressing what we're expressing, having the experiences that we're having, or is it in shifting the relationship to it? And so it can be easy to take in what I'm saying and saying, oh, I just got to change the way I think about it. You know, I just got to love myself when I'm, when I'm being aggravated or when I'm feeling stress or anxiety, you know, easy to say, very challenging to implement, very challenging to implement because the, the challenges that having the thought or having the insight is, is instantaneous. And so we think, oh, if I just change my thought, like I'll, I'll be able to do that, but it's easy to change your thought. For some people, for some people that even that's not easy, right? To stubbornly believe what they believe, even if it's harmful to them or other people. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you are that person or have been that person or know that person, right? But to actually sit in a specific way and sit with the discomfort of what's arising and not try to reframe it, not try to change it, not try to get to some other part of it, not try to change your experience, but be with it until you learn how to love it is the great mission of our time because everything that we have seen so far humanity be is what humanity is it's all the things it's all those things and it's none of those things yeah and even saying reframing feels like gaslighting sometimes though it's true or you know gaslighting or it could be just bypassing, you know, oh, I don't like this experience. Let me just change my mind about it. But the experience is happening. You know, if you've lost a loved one and you reframe it and you're like, oh, well, you know, they're in a happier place or whatever it is that you do, that doesn't change at all the fact that you feel grief and sadness inside. But if you avoid the grief and the sadness that's within you and then you spend a lifetime trying to hold that at bay to not really feel the pain of that moment, you will forever expend energy, thought forms, and all sorts of triggers that are going to arise within you to not have that experience. In opposition to that, or you know, as an as a offering here, let's say not an opposition, but as an offering here, if you were to allow yourself to sit with that in the grace of somebody else's presence and you actually felt the sadness, the depravity, the grief that you know, is arising within you and you began to see that from a loving place, and it moved through your system, you would then be forever liberated from that experience. And the next time sadness or grief or anything else that sniffed of that would arise in your system, you would have a lot more space for it within you, including space for other people to have that experience as well. And so you would be less triggered by people as a whole in society who are exuding that characteristic where before you might've been 
super triggered by other people, not because you're triggered by them, but because you don't want to be triggered yourself by witnessing somebody in that trigger, if that makes any sense. So I want to open, I wanted to open with that as like a set frame. And then I think today I'd love to just get some of your guys' questions in here and uh, kind of directly speak to some things that you might be dealing with. You can make it as general or as personal uh, as possible. Personal is always going to be more helpful in terms of feedback that Elon and I can give you. Um, and just uh, while you guys are taking that into consideration, uh, you know, look, Elon and I have been doing this, as we say, for a really long time, coaching for, well, in our own work for 21 years, I believe coaching for about 18. I don't exactly quite remember when we really got into coaching, but it was, it was pretty soon after um, being in personal development. And so, uh, you know, it's a good opportunity to get some, some feedback from us. So if, if you're willing to be the first out here and kind of set the tone for everybody else, I know it can be very vulnerable to share about what's going on in our lives. So share, share it in a way that makes you feel good. Um, yeah, and then Robert Walker was saying, you know, what I was sharing seems like the, uh, <clears throat> the opposite of the law of attraction stuff. I, I, yeah. I mean, that, that's the reality law of attraction. Is there such a thing as manifesting? I, th I think absolutely. Uh, in the way that it, it's been perpetrated and projected on people, like it's a simple thing. You sit there and you visualize and everything comes to you. I don't know about you guys. That has not been my experience with it at all. Like that's, that has never worked for me at all. And, and I think partly the reason for that is, you know, if you're going to, let's use a money as a prime example, and you want to think about having a million dollars, as you think about having a million dollars or visualize having a million dollars or feel into having a million dollars, you are going to bump up against a lot of stuff inside of your system that just does not believe that you deserve that. And they might not be using language to tell you that. There might be tightness in your system or all sorts of other stuff arising. So try as you might to visualize it. You can't convince your system to believe something it doesn't already feel, it doesn't already believe. And so that the, the work is in really sitting with and clearing all that stuff so that you can live as if that thing has already come to pass. Like for me, that's, that's what I, if, when I do stuff like that, I look at, you know, where are the edges of what's happening internal inside of my system? Because it, it's, for most of us, maybe Elon, you can chime on this too. It's nearly impossible to discern what you actually believe. <laughs> I know it seems so simple, like, oh, okay, what do I believe? And you just kind of spit game and you say the thing. But in my investigations and all this time that I've worked at, there's so many parts of you that won't come forward and actually tell you what they believe. They, they are unconsciously working behind the scenes. It's either in the felt sense or sometimes you're like, I don't even know I believe that. But when I look at my life, Clearly that keeps happening. Like, where is that being sourced from? Because I don't have that belief even, but it keeps happening anyway. So something else is at play that we can't see or that we can't discern or we can't speak to and get to and, and to that understanding within our own system. And so there's a lot of unconscious systems, so to speak. And when we think about unconscious, we think like, oh, I can't think about it in some way or I'm not aware of it. But the reality is, is like you can feel through awareness practices, very subtle things happening in the body that don't need to talk or, or have voice at all. Uh, bro, I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. Um, or, you know, just pick up the conversation where you feel or, you know, read, read a question as you please. Yeah. I was trying to see if people were going to actually drop some, some questions in there. Yeah. So, I mean, Rebecca, there was a Q and a here. I'm stuck. Uh, Sharon, Sharon was saying I'm stuck in destructive thoughts from last week fueled by pain. So you can kind of generally speak to that if you want to. Um, let's see. Yeah. I didn't really see anybody. Yeah. Have a question. Hmm. <laughs> So why don't, I mean, you can either do Nina's, you know, about anxiety and stress and not allowing other people's experience to be your own. I think just, just extrapolate from the questions, what you will and kind of yeah go with it. Yeah. She just reaffirmed that question in the Q and A. Got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> So 
So first of all, I just want to offer that anytime we label something as anxiety or stress, uh, we're already doing ourselves a disservice. And what I mean by that is there's not a single person on this planet. And if I walked up to them and was like, Hey, would you like to feel more anxiety and more stress that anyone's gonna be like, yep, sign me up. I'd <laughs> love to. Right. So no one's relationship to anxiety and stress is, uh, positive. Right. And if that's the case, the second we say that thing, then we're already creating some sort of internal fight with our circumstance. So when you're like, oh, I feel anxious, you've already created a, an internal battle where now it's like, I have to make this stop. This is not okay. This is not good. And you already have that internal battle. Same thing with stress, overwhelm, you know, fill in the blank. So first thing we want to do is we want to actually get away from labeling any of these things. The second piece and this is where we can kind of use a little bit of the mindset stuff as well as the, um, so like the growing up work as well as the waking up work. The notion that anyone is doing anything to you or anyone has an impact on you. So, you know, Nina said like how to, how to not absorb other people's anxiety and stress. It's like, what we're really saying is that when I'm around this person, because my evaluation of them is that they are stressed or overwhelmed or anxious or whatever it is, I'm taking that on. And yes, there are empath, empathic people who walk through life and they're just kind of like a sponge for everything that's happening. And it's a whole different conversation. Ultimately, if you like, I'm visual, so I'll just paint you this visualization. Like to me, every single one of us is connected to every other being on the planet. Um, obviously, you have a lot more connections to people in your own household or people that you're close with, but in general, like we're we're all connected. So basically, what happens is there's these like energetic waves that we're all sending out into the you know, ether. And when that wave hits our system individually, it's going to have some sort of reaction, some sort of, uh, that energy is going to hit something in us, etc. And so if someone's energetic makeup hits your system and triggers something inside of you, then that's a great place to look because what that means is that there's an aspect energetically, some trauma, something that happened way back when that hasn't been fully worked through, hasn't been fully processed, hasn't been fully healed. And so these other beings aren't sending anything to you. They're not like beaming anxiety or beaming stress to you. What they are is they're beaming some energetic wave and that energetic wave is hitting something inside of your system that was already in there to begin with. They didn't like plan to chip inside of you or like anything like that. It's in you. And it's a great opportunity. You know, we talk about this at the live event, how relationships are one of the greatest opportunities for our healing. Because it's inside of those relationships that we get these aspects of ourselves highlighted so that we can now bear witness to them. And so for me, I'm not, I just want to preface this. I'm not saying that you need to love every single person in your life for, you know, um, get to this place where like no one can do any wrong and all that. Like there are just certain people and certain energies that one does not want to be around. Like I don't love to go and sit in heroin dens and just soak up that energy. Like I don't love to be around uh, addicts, you know, like 
I don't love to be around people who are narcissistic or, uh, you know, ego driven. Like, I don't enjoy it. I'm not like, yes, these are the people that I want to hang around with, you know. Having said that, though, I have created in my nervous system uh, through different types of beings and experiences, a resiliency to create a distinction that that we call uh, mine, not mine. And so when I feel someone else's or, energy, or me, not me, uh, sorry, me, not me. Uh, when I feel someone else's energy, I'm clear whether it is my stuff that is arising and for me to witness, or it's simply someone else's. And if it's someone else's, I can allow it just to flow through me without having that constriction around it. I think what most, what happens to most people is they feel that thing hit their system. And then because like I said, in the beginning with the label, they're not focusing on the sensation. They're actually focusing on what the mind is saying about the sensation. And they're like, this is anxious. I feel that right. In that moment, everything contracts in our system and we almost like um, constrict the flow of the energy. So as it moves in, it wants to move out as well. But we are the ones that are like bottling up inside. And now we're starting to process all this other stuff. So all that to say, like one... I really don't believe that anyone has the power to inject anything inside of you in a way. I think at, at best what they are doing is they're simply uh, helping to highlight certain aspects of yourself that you haven't fully worked through. Uh, and then two is I believe that as we do a lot more of this work, and what I mean by that is being able to sit in presence with a practitioner, uh, being able to sit in group fields and, and soak in that experience, uh, being met and seen and witnessed by other, being met and seen and witnessed in group. When you do all of that, it actually allows you to start to create that distinction I was talking about, me, not me and allows you to be more open. Michael Singer talks about like the keeping your heart open. So it allows you to really keep your heart open while all this stuff is moving through. And the less we constrict, the less it stays bound up in our body. Um, because at the end of the day, energy just wants to move, right? It's a, it's a flow. Yeah. So just, you know, kind of picking up on the theme here from some people, whether it's, you know, stress or negative or destructive thought forms, just for a moment, you know, like and in, in investigate this for yourself. You know, here's our ethos here. And I think it's a, a universal principle ethos, but worth noting. It's like when you're coming to someone to learn something, a teacher, it's it's actually stupid for the teacher to give you an answer. Because, you know, mine and Elon's an answers are based on our personal investigations and what, what we have found is anecdotally true for us. Now, we see patterns with people and they seem like universal principles, but not everyone views the same thing, right? So what's the real job of, of a teaching or a teacher is not to tell you what to see, just simply to show you where to look. And it's really upon each of us as individuals to then look and investigate, get curious, and then self verify and validate within our own experience what feels true. So for those of you guys who are dealing with destructive thought patterns or negative thought patterns, and again, I think that's pretty normal for a human being, at least in the current situation and conditioning that humanity seems to be in, trying to control them or get rid of them just sit there for a moment and feel what that's like. And then you tell me in the chat box if that's working for you to try to gain control over that mechanism.
So how's that going to try to control that? Is that working? Yes or no in the chat box. Has anybody been able to control their thoughts? At all? Yes or no in the chat box. I'm going to just, you know, assumptive say that chances are you probably have not been able to do it. And if you can locate a person who has done it, I would love to talk to them. <laughs> so the proposition here is, is that you're not going to control that thought. Now, let me ask you another question. Has anybody here been able to control their emotions? Yes or no? The anger swells, the sadness swells. I mean, you could certainly avoid it and like try not to pay attention to it, but can you control it? I'm going to assume again, the answer is no. So, <laughs> so then people come to us and they go, how do I control my thoughts? How do I control my emotions? Can't do it. So if your proposition is to come to us and say, well, you got to teach me how to do that because it seems like you guys have learned to do that. We haven't. I've never met anybody who's done that. And Elon and I get to talk to a lot of people and also a lot of really wise people who've done work for a very long time and they can't do that. <laughs> they can't control their circumstances. They can't control their mind. They can't control their emotions. And so again, if you're going to come and do work, you know, mindfulness practice, awareness practice, energetic practices, healing practices, you're wasting your flipping time and money by even proposing that that's the direction we should drive the ship in. Don't do that. You can if you want. But you're going to waste your time, which is okay if you're into wasting your time. So... Again, I, I kind of labeled it before, but I'll, I'll say here again, the goal is not to try to control these mechanism, mechanisms, it's to actually shift our relationship to them. Notice that your relationship with it, you know, Stacy comes here on a, on a reasonably weak, uh, you know, on a weekly basis and she's going through some tough times. So I, I'm saying this with a great deal of empathy because I don't know what it's like to be in your mind. I don't know what it's like to be in your body, but I can relate from, being a human being who's dealt with a lot of stress and fear. I was depressed, suicidal in my life. You know, I've, 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 I've tasted those very dark spaces of mind and body and consciousness. And so to some degree, I, I at least have a flavor of what people are going through in that sense, but I certainly don't know your particular flavor of your experience. And like, you know, we go to these doctors and we take the pills and it's all the same. It's just trying to get control of these systems and you can't, and I get that that's really fucking scary when it's super fucking intense and you're having like depressed and suicidal thoughts and you're like, you know, you're like, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it to tomorrow. If we can't shut this stuff down, it's, it's a very scary place to be. But if we can agree fundamentally that we can't control our thoughts, we can't control our emotions, we can't control our circumstances, then what is the point? You know, the one thing the one thing that we have is not even controlling our reactions. We can't even control that. The only thing that we really have is we're either in our conditioning, in our conditioned mind, which 99.99999% of the human population is not even aware that they're in a conditioned mind. They just think that's their mind, period. That's where we're starting from. We are infants in understanding consciousness and understanding our minds, at least right now. I think there were previous societies, ancient societies that lived on this planet that had a lot more insight into the nature of reality than we do because we are obsessed with science and measuring it instead of trusting in our own intuition and our own experience. I mean, how many things that human beings knew were going on well before there was a device that can measure that stuff? You know, like spiritual science has been talking about the stuff that we're only starting to measure through quantum physics and mathematics and all sorts of, you know, machines and hypotheses. But like, if you experience it, you already know it's true. You're not waiting for a scientific paper to arise so that you can tell you, oh, okay, good. They, they finally agree. It must be true. Like, thank, thank goodness for that. 
you know? So it's like, again, the, the work that we're doing here and what takes a lot of practice is in your ability to view what's arising within you, whether it's a thought, an emotion, or an experience that's unfolding in your life and actually moving through it in a safe and resourced way that flips you from being somebody who resists what's arising to somebody who receives and accepts and allows for the arising to happen. Now, does that mean in the allowing of the arising to happen that it's always comfortable? Hell no. Sometimes it's wildly uncomfortable. In contrast, in the same way, there is sometimes really beautiful experiences moving through you. Somebody tells you that they love you or compliments you or tells you that you're amazing and you also can't fully hear it or really experience how wonderful you really are. And there's edges to that. You don't let that experience in. And it's the same thing because judgment arises and you think, I'm not worthy of this experience. I'm not going to have it. And so you don't let the good stuff in either just the same way you can, you contract around it and you don't actually let life in. And so humanity has gotten very good at letting a very narrow band of life in that's acceptable. And we've gotten very bad at allowing for the full breath of life to just be here and just kind of be at awe at what's arising, even when it's totally terrifying and totally frightening sometimes, which it can be. And the reality is, is that you, me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, like hopefully the mission for all of us is, is self-realization, which also means self-liberation. And just tell me yes or no in the chat box, you know, is that what you're here for? Even if you've never heard it articulated that way, isn't that what you really want? Isn't that what we all really want? We want a world that's liberated and free individuals who are liberated and free where connection feels authentic and it feels safe, where we feel safe as individuals and as a collective whole, where we can feel our hearts and our love, we trust our intuition, we're, we're guided by principles of nature. We feel wholesome and connected with community around us. We can raise children with real presence and get back to a lot of the stuff on, on, in our world that really matters, which probably has a lot less to do with money and has a lot more to do with socializing and connection. And all those things have either been conditioned in some weird way right now, or just don't feel safe to have in one way or another. And so I'm just, I can only tell you from, from the journey that we've been on 20, last 21 years and even more intensely the last seven, doing the type of work that we describe in our live events and in our, you know, our, our level one, two, and three programs. It's like, you can't, there is no light switch that I have been able to find that clicks it on and clicks it off. It has come with extraordinary commitment on mine and Elon's part to do the work that we've done even more commitment to be the type of people that are going to take that work and translate it and transmit it to other people in this world. Uh, you know, at, I say this oftentimes, a great risk to, to us sometimes in our financial lives and our well-being and stuff like that, mostly because we, we literally just can't seem to help it. But that, that's mm -hmm. what we're, that's what we feel like we're designed for. If you know the human body, if everybody on the planet is part of a human body, cells play different roles in the human body. Some are here for the intellect. Some are here for the, the felt sense. Some are here to clean up the muck. You know, some are here to whatever, right? Like just like cells in the body, they're all specialized doing different roles, making the whole work. That's how humanity is also. You cannot look at any individual person and go, oh, they're doing it the right way. That might not be your purpose. That might not be your tone. What I can at least somewhat agree on universally is that everybody wants to be free. Everyone wants to love and feel connected to. Everyone wants to feel their essence fully through. So what's between you and all those things is all the conditioning that's arising within you. And because that conditioning is arising, you don't even know who you are. It's been so long since you've actually felt yourself in any authentic way. And so you come to a teaching thinking, oh, I haven't learned enough. I need to add more to my intellectual tool belt. And it's the exact opposite. You don't need to add more. You need to subtract what was given to you.
you need to remove the the cloaks and the veiling that's been put over your eyes and over your heart and over your over your minds right and that means feeling through everything you've never wanted to feel through feeling through all the things that you've avoided an entire lifetime that were probably really painful when they happen and continue to be really painful as you hold on to them. And so the fear for everybody and why you're not free of it. So if your mind is going crazy and on loudspeaker, I promise you, I promise you there is a correlated sensation in your body, probably of tension or pain or collapse of some kind. And what your mind is really doing is it's trying to draw your attention to that sensation. That's why it's so overreactive. It's trying to deal with that discomfort. And that discomfort has been there a long time. And the more that you avoid it, the worse your mental state gets. And I understand that asking you to turn and look at what you have been avoiding your entire life is a big ask. And that's why we have the teachings that we have, because it shows you how to do that in a healthy way with support, because you can't do it by yourself. You just can't do it by yourself. We've tried. It's not possible. I've, I've never seen anybody be able to do it on their own. So there's a certain structure. That's what all these teachings are. They're very simple, but there's a certain way that we can support one another in order to go through those experiences. When you allow for the unfolding to unfold, what happens on the other end of it is you are liberated from that experience. When you find out that it doesn't kill you, it's not scary anymore. And you won't, and, and furthermore, you won't get reactive when you see that in society. If you are uncomfortable with the anger that lives inside of you, you've been swallowing that anger and pushing it down and pushing it down. You have no voice and you feel like, life or people around you dominate you constantly and you are a victim of your circumstances, right? And I get how real that experience can feel like. And then, so then you see other people in society being anger, angry and you judge them harshly because you think I can't be that angry. They can't be that angry. It's not because you're avoiding that within you. So you'll avoid it outside of yourself also. And then there's no love over here and there's no love over there. And round and round we go in society doing this shit over and over again to each other and to ourselves. So the work is not in convincing everybody else how to act or how to feel or how to think because they're all in the same prison as you. They've turned away from all the stuff inside of them. They're not liberated. They're not free. You want to see a healthier world, which I imagine you do if you're here. It's you. You got to do your own work. You got to turn within and learn these things and find out how to resource yourself. How to stabilize yourself, how to align yourself, stop working on just your mind and thinking, I just got to get a grasp on this fucking thing. I got to learn how to control it. I got to learn how to manage it better. I did that for 15 years. You can learn how to control and manage your mind better. It will not make the pain go away. It just won't. Your options are to turn within and face the darkness and go through that. And then I promise you, your mind will calm down. It will relax. I'm, I'm, I'm proud and privileged to say that I'm at, at a point in my life where my mind does not talk negatively to me. It's not harsh towards me. Generally speaking, it's rather kind in its verbiage. That, does that mean I never get hooked in? No, it happens once in a while, but it's not my as lived experience anymore. And, and I'm, I'm telling you from a person who was a highly reactive system that can still happen to me but it's much less the case these days to a person who is depressed and suicidal. And my mind was vicious. I, you know, the devil lived in within me and to, to be here on a, on a journey and tell you that's not happening anymore. I, I would have never thought that in a million fucking years that that was going to happen. But I, I'm, I'm offering that the function of that again was not me controlling my mind. It began with witnessing my mind and recognizing that what my mind was saying was untrue. Even if it felt true, a part of me was like, well, I'm watching my mind say that. So it has to throw at least some falsehood into it because I can watch my mind saying that. I don't have to believe it. But what really began to help me move beyond that and stop being in the managing, coping, trying to get rid of thing is what exactly what I just said. There was tension in my body. I had spent a lifetime unconsciously turned away from that. Not because I didn't know. I didn't even know I was supposed to turn in and look. 
And then I began to sit with teachers who taught me how to sit, who taught me how to look. And when I sat with them, I felt resourced enough and aligned enough and courageous enough to go through those experiences. And as I did one by one through all the grief and the sadness and the anger, I began to liberate myself and my mind quieted down. And today I don't have to manage or cope my mind. It just doesn't do those things unless I become highly reactive within. And then it does some crazy shit again. And that's how it goes. So, you know, when you say, how do I stop that? I'm telling you, we tell you every week, this is what it looks like. But if you think you're going to take, you know, a two or six or an eight week course, and you're going to have that down packed and flat, you're not. Because after a lifetime of negative conditioning that you do get some negative pleasure from PS and that's what you know, and that's your default, it's going to be a bit before you train your, your system to operate in a different default. There's a lot of energy moving in that direction. You know, changing, changing the way that a river flows is not an overnight thing. So then, yeah, I get it. A lot of people turn to pills or to people making empty promises or whatever it might be. But we're telling you, like we got here, we got here on, 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 a, on a great amount and a great amount of commitment on our part. And you can either start that journey today or you could start it 10 years from now. But either way, at some point in time, every human being has to come to their own understanding that the healing that, that needs to happen comes out of, out of self-vindication that you are worth that healing. Like you, you got to make that healing happen on your own. You got to start getting curious and learning things. And if one thing doesn't work for you, then go try something else. If this doesn't feel like it's making you progress, there's plenty of other therapies out there today that can that can help you and support you. Elon and I are, are not like, okay, we got the we got the, the perfect healing for you and the right thing. Elon and I have tried like fifteen hundred different things before we disseminated what were the things that, that worked most of the time for most people. And even then, I can't tell you that what we teach is it has a hundred percent success rate. That would be insane. But does it work for nine out of 10 people? It works really, really well for nine out of 10 people. And if you can show me anything on the planet that promises that level of, of, of transformation or, or any sort of um, positive gain for the rest of your life, like you can go buy a pair of jeans for $500 that are going to make you feel really good and make your ass look spectacular, but give it a month. You're not going to give a fuck about those pair of jeans. There, there's no upside at the end of the day, it's not going to improve your life in any real way, right? Well, the only thing that can consistently improve the quality of life is our relationship to the way that life is arising within us. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those, you know, very neat. Just said the work that keeps on giving, you know, we've done so many things in our, in the 20 plus years that we've been doing this. And I was saying to my wife the other day, you know, the guy and I had, had taken courses and worked with teachers and uh, incessant book readings and watching videos and finding the next person and the next person who's going to be our next teacher, blah, blah, blah. And for the first time in my life, I'm at a point where I don't want or need any of that. Like truly, uh, because when you realize that all of that is within you, then all you seek is people, experiences, uh, teachers that keep bringing you in there, that allow you to find depth in there, that help you find your truth, that help you find your wisdom, that help you unlock your own doors before I was just a junkie for the next greatest style or uh, teaching or like uh, process or whatever it was. So I can take it and then like come up with some other version and, and, you know, share that with others. And now like, I don't give a shit. I honestly think that like all that stuff is 
done because most people are doing this work through their mind and the mind needs order. The mind needs processes. The mind needs concepts. The mind needs ideas. But the mind has very little interest in you healing any of the things that you've been trying to heal. It would love for you to stay in status quo. So when you read a book, it's like you have these little epiphanies. You're like, oh, my God, that's why my life is the way that it is. And then three days later, you're doing the same shit. Because you knowing and understanding makes no difference about what's happening inside. So, yeah, it is the work that keeps on giving because there is an infinite depth to you and your soul. Infinite. And when you can bring awe to the process and to your journey without having some sort of like, I have to get to this thing. You know, guys started to say this, this line recently where he's like, there is no one thing. It's all part of the one thing. It's every, like everything is tied to everything. And so it's like, You want to work on your health? Great. It's the same stuff inside. You want to work on your abundance? Great. Same stuff inside. You want to work on your relationship? Great. Same stuff inside. It's all the same. Yeah. The more, the more you separate it, the more complexity you add. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's the, sorry, bro, to pop in here, but like, that's, that's kind of the human condition is we create so many distinctions that we create complexity. It's like everything needs its own system. Everything needs to be concluded and understood in a different way. Awareness holds all of it. There's only one awareness. We, we name it a lot of different ways because there's different qualities that we can notice, but it's like, every, like there's an infinite expanse to notice within awareness. Like it's like the universe. It's infinitely expanding in all directions, every type of universe, every type of galaxy, every type of material. Like you just keep, we just keep blowing our own minds by all the discoveries of everything we're noticing because everything arises in everything, you know? But it's like, it's the same lens viewing everything. So if you stop trying to make it complex, like, oh, I got to deal with my health and I got to deal with this. It's like the underlying stuff that's making it so challenging. That's making it so challenging is, is your own stuff is like, it's just the, is, is thinking that it's different in some way. It's really the conditioning that's underneath. It really is. So the more that you dig into that. And again, you know, Stacy, I get it, right? Like your, your, your mental landscape, but it's like having a conversation with Elon is not going to stop that from happening. Yeah. You know, doing MMI is going to give you tools, but like, it's going to still require daily mindfulness on your part to view and look through those lenses at those parts until they slowly lose power over you. Cause right now you're not having them. They're having you. Yeah. Yeah. Like when people are in, in the spot that Stacy's in and, you know, we come across uh, people cause people find us all the time. It's like, you have to get out of the thinking that there's something wrong with you and you have to get rid of how is this person still in here? Not sure. We have our first, we have our first, uh, troll. Yes. Um, on a one track faggot yeah. mind that that's yeah. literally <laughs> that. Wow. The, the amazingness that people like this, this is, this is a good use of someone's time, right. To do this. Yeah, it's time. Incredible. Um, like this, this thinking that you have to get out of this situation is what keeps you more locked into the situation, right? It's kind of what I said, like you label it, anxiety or stress or anything. And then you're fighting everything. So every day is exhausting because it's a constant battle instead of just like allowing for whatever it is to be there. Right. Okay. So negative thoughts, negative thoughts. Okay. So be with negative thoughts. Can you love negative thoughts? And if you can't love negative thoughts, can you love that you can't love negative thoughts? Because you trying to fight it or like look for this thing, like there's nothing that I'm going to tell you that hasn't been said in MMI or on this Tuesday or anything like that. That's you're going to like hear and go like, oh my God, that's it. 
and then all of a sudden it's going to stop. Like it's just not going to happen. It's it's daily work every day. You know, if 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 you think like if the pendulum is zero, 100, right? Like a hundred negative thoughts, zero positive thoughts. Okay. So if in one day you're able to find one positive thought, like switch one negative to one positive. Okay. So now you're going from 99 to one. That's progress. This notion that you're going to flip the scale like that. It's, it's just not reality. That stuff takes a lot of time. So, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a, te- you know, you got to attend to yourself. Like you attend to a garden, you know, you stop watering it, you stop resourcing it, the plants die. And so like, you know, transformation, like being healthy in your body is not, it's not a sprint. It's a, it's a lifestyle that you take on and you do it for the rest of your life. You know, cause at the end of the day, we all in stressful moments fall back in default on the things that we grew up on. It's just kind of the system, you know, like there, you know, I have a five-year-old at home. He doesn't, he's not going to remember the first five years of life. Now his amygdala though, has all this imprinting about positive and negative experiences he had growing up. And those are going to dictate a lot, you know, of, of what he experienced in this world that he will not be able to explain. There'll just be stuff arising within his experience seen through the sensational lens of those triggers. And look to this day, Elon and I are trying constantly new stuff. You know, I just did a, a, the last few months I've spent in a, a, a very intense neuro refeedback training, literally because of those things. Like I, I understand there's certain things I can just not reach into yet. And it may or may not be time for those things to be reached into, you know, and like, it'll happen when it happens. It won't when it won't. So, you know, a lot of it is patience and grace. And I do understand when it's very dark and it's very scary. It's like, you feel like you don't have that time. Having said that, if you don't start with something, you know, there's, there's pain is a great motivator. Nothing is more motivating than pain. So you got to use that energy and instead of driving yourself crazy, you're like, I would spend even more time in the practices. You know, if you've gone through MMI, but like those distinctions aren't second nature to you, then go through it again. You know, if you're in level one and again, those distinctions haven't become second nature to you, go through it again, show up at the live calls, struggle, be in the struggle. Like dedicate yourself to the struggle. You're like, it's really hard right now. Great. Double your efforts. There's no savior. We can't save you. We have challenges in our life too. Some of them that don't go away or have been around for a very long time. And it's like, okay, so we just keep opening up to them and saying, what else is the opportunity to learn here? What else can I get from this? You know, because if I would have learned it already, I would no longer be imprisoned by it. This would not be an issue anymore. Yeah. And some of it was just, again, not, not our fault, no more than it is your fault that you have what you have, but it was given to you through the, the circumstances and conditioning and your soul's purpose and a million other things that we can go into. But at the end of the day, it's like, but when the moment you recognize it, it is your responsibility to do something about it. You know, Nelson Mandela was in jail. He could have been imprisoned and made a victim of his circumstances but he didn't you know he he made the best and learned from his imprisonment to the point where he became a globally recognized human being for his incredible perspective and work and it's just you know everybody who spent any time with him was just blown away by his essence but his circumstances did that it was just who he decided to be in the face of those circumstances and that's that's the calling for all of us okay again if you guys do want to have a chat with elon about uh, it's a one-on-one 30 minute call with him, get some coaching from him and then explore what it's like to be in our programs. So you have like a deeper understanding. You can go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash Elon at any time. There's $111 um, enrollment fee to do that. Just so we're, uh, we're clear that you have something at stake and show up on time. Um, and if you do decide to join a program, we just roll that over um, as a credit to towards that program. And, you know, everything here between level one and level three is built like a silo. 
setting foundations at different levels that you build up upon. Because if we just go straight to the advanced awareness work with you, okay, I got to run. I got to pick okay, up another call. Go, go do your thing. Yeah. Uh, if you if you just you know jump into the most advanced stuff right away and you don't have the foundation from before, it's going to scramble your experience a little bit. So it, everything is built in a particular way to give you the foundations that are necessary to to move you through those different paths and processes. Okay. So again, soulsandseekers.com forward slash Elon. He's got usually about five spots a week that he's open to. So if you do want to speak to him this week, that's the best path to take. All right, guys, we'll see you here next week. Thank you for being here. Thank you, dear one, for choosing to share a bit of your day with us. We value you greatly. And as a way to give back and help you to deepen these practices, we want to invite you to join our incredible community on Facebook. You can do so easily by going to joinoldsouls.com and ask for an invite. This is our private community where old souls and seekers are able to grow and share their journey with others. We hold exclusive weekly live streams, we answer your personal questions, and offer valuable insights that we won't be able to share here on the podcast. So again, just head to joinoldsouls.com and grab your invite today. And as always, if you enjoy this podcast, please head to iTunes and leave us a review. It's the only way other people can find this show. So if it's making a difference in your life, please share the love. Until we meet again, have an amazing week, dear one.